well. Yeah, so she asked me every single time if I turned off the grill, right? Yes. You don't ever want me to forget. And I've actually never, I've never once forgotten, believe it or not. Only because I traumatized you with it. With what? Asking you all the time if you turn yeah, it off. Yeah, so now I won't forget. You have flashlights on. Oh. Okay, go get this salad bowl. Oh, did you already make yours? No. So we I mean, gotta go make them in there, yeah, right? Yeah, you go first, because tonight's your dinner night. The big king gets to go first. <laughs> the big king. So, here we are. You're probably noticing a lack of carbohydrates. And that's also because I have started a new frontier of my life. I, so, admittedly, I lived by the mantra, carbs are king, for the last few years. Um, and I would just go crazy with carbohydrates. I mean, and as people know, I trained so much, I trained so hard, and it actually made me have a bigger and bigger reliance on carbs. Um, such a reliance that like, I, I don't think I could even maintain my energy. Um, so I've now gone the opposite direction um, to go low carb, but only at certain times. And this is what's super important. Um, carbohydrates are definitely still ex extremely important for endurance performance. I'll be the first one to say that. I'll be the first one to admit it. So I'm not like, I don't even honestly really know what keto means. I, I, I'm joking. I do know what keto means. I've looked it up, but like I'm still the farthest thing from keto that you could possibly imagine. So the idea is just to do this selectively and in certain ways, okay? So I'll take a st another step back because this is actually a long explanation. Like I'm gonna have to delay making my salad here so that you know I don't run out of time. So now that the salad's made, I'll get a little more into the meat and potatoes of it. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Anyways, so <laughs> I have to go back to my testing and actually the last few years, if you look at my Ironmans, they've been very inconsistent. I've had a few good Ironmans. I've had, well, I've had a few great Ironmans. I've had two very good Ironmans and the rest have been very poor. Um, and the reasoning for this is because of extremely poor fat burning. I always sort of had suspected it uh, underneath that that's what was going on with my physiology, but the structure I was under wasn't about uh, changing that in a specific way. It was just always about raising up how much I can push, how hard I can push, and taking in as much calories and energy as possible. Um, and, and this worked well to raise my thresholds, and it actually made me a great 70.3 athlete without even trying to be, but it almost made me a worse Ironman athlete. So I went to the Wahoo Lab, I started doing my testing, and exactly as I thought, my fat burning is absolutely horrible. Um, as an idea, at 300 to 310 watts, um, which is basically my Ironman pace, I, am, I would need to take in 800 calories of carbohydrates per hour to not bonk in an Ironman. So as you can see, drastic things cause for drastic measures. I had to create a change, and so this is the best way to implement that. We're starting with dinner because the protocol starts here. I had high intensity training today. Now I have no carbs for dinner. And then tomorrow I wake up and I will ride two hours with no carbs. But it's extremely important that I still eat. So I'll have fat and I'll have protein. And then at two hours, I'll take in just 30 grams of carbs an hour. So that's basically 90 calories an hour for the next two hours. Um, that's the protocol. We're gonna show you through it. This is my third week of doing this. In the first week, I was daydreaming about donuts, and I stopped and got a donut on the first ride. And since then, I've noticed uh, improved performance. So, yeah, it's what I have to do to become a better Ironman athlete. Uh, of course, now we'll get into the big announcement, I guess. Or should we do that now when I'm out on the bike? What do you think? We'll do it later. So you're going to have to keep watching. Rested and ready for today. I've got my beautiful breakfast here. <laughs> breakfast of champions. And what we got here? We got, you can tell there's just no carbs there. So we got uh, eggs and we got avocado. And I'll put some salt on it. 
And uh, here I am. I've got this little goofy aura ring to try and put on, which I actually had on until 5.30 in the morning, and then I decided to take it off, so. Another thing I'm playing around with is ketones. So, um, yeah, I'm playing around with these. It's kind of brain fuel. Um, I'm a few weeks into taking these. I think they help me a lot. Um, actually, I think they help me more on the hard days than the easy days. High intensity intervals, they sort of give me a reserve in the bank. So, anyways, just continuing to test around, do some different things. Like I said, a give and a take. Um, the taste grows on me. The taste, everyone actually says the taste is always horrible. I actually find the taste not to be pleasant, but not to be like uh, as bad as people described it. I actually feel it like right away, it goes straight to my brain. I feel it first in my brain, and then I start to feel it kind of in my body. Um, sort of in all the rage these days. Um, and we think, uh, me and coach think that like, it's better if you're a bad fat burner, it'll benefit you more, but um, it likely can benefit everyone, especially in the long endurance sport. So it's, it's something worth trying, I'd say. The plan is really my workout is I just got to cruise and I got to fight the urge to have carbs for as long as possible. If I make it to two hours, I'm going to be like, I've made major progress if I make it to two hours. I don't think I will, but it's just all aerobic zone two. So it's not like I'm smashing it. And why is it so important, like based off of what you're doing with the low carb diet to keep the efforts easy? Yeah. Well, so one, right, obviously as intensity goes up, like your need and your urge for carbohydrates goes up, not just like a mental need, but like your body will need carbohydrates as you go harder. And so like today specifically, we're getting after working at fat burning. And so we don't want to do high intensity because if I do, then one, I'm going to get low on energy. It would actually be counterproductive. Uh, the other thing is, so how we set up this block yesterday was all high intensity. So hard swim, hard bike, hard run, all high intensity. So Lots of carbs brought in and then today is used specifically to work on fat burning but it's actually also we're doing this and it's still like a, a it's not an off day but it's sort of a recovery day it's a, a day to facilitate me to get ready to for tomorrow because then tomorrow has a hard swim more hard intervals on the bike and then a long run at the end of that and so then that's um if i go too hard today it'll take away from tomorrow um, but it's also so that i can i can build up that fat burning as well as possible All right, so here we are. You guys are probably like, whoa, what's going on all day? Or hopefully you're interested because I think it's pretty interesting actually how you can create athletic changes through your, through your diet and certain manipulations uh, as opposed to just trying to train and hit watts and hit paces. Um, it, it's definitely a new world to me to kind of say, oh, I can actually find performance improvement through what I do like, yeah, through my habitual diet um, in manipulating that. But the big announcement is the new coach. So I interviewed lots of coaches um, and I settled and I feel fantastic about, and I went with Dr. Dan Plews out of New Zealand, um, obviously most famously now known for coaching Chelsea Sodaro here at the World Champs. Uh, he's got the age group uh, Kona course record as well, um, Coaches Gomez. But just talking with him, I felt so good because he has a PhD in, in sports science, so he really knows his information. But combined with that, he was very personable and he showed knowing like me as a person and, and just also like realizing that training and top performance doesn't happen exclusively in a, in a sports science lab. And 
he just showed great knowledge of that and then we got along great as people so it just seemed uh like the right fit uh to make the decision and then I'm now in my third third week with him and it's been fantastic everything's been super structured disciplined focused the guy is the guy is on my ass cracking the whip uh not cracking the whip in a sense of like oh push 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 but like just always paying attention and often it's cracking the whip like hey that recovery interval needed to be easier actually that those are things i've heard and oh that that run let's actually ease that up by 15 seconds a mile and that way the next day then you're fat you're fresher and faster on the hard run so it's just uh it's more attention to detail than i've ever gotten and and yeah i have to say i'm incredibly stoked about this season and what's going to happen and and i've got uh my eyes on the moon so to speak i think there's there's no reason i can't go big and um so the first race of the season is going to be clash miami and then i'm gonna go to oceanside that's the plan right now um i'm just there's no i'm, I'm kind of done with oh there's a races there's b races there's c races for me now my focus is just if i'm on the start line i'm there to perform and i'm i i hope to be there to win um and obviously the, the race determines the caliber of what that requires so that's the only distinction to me in my brain of a ba a race or b race it takes more to win a pto major than it takes to win clash miami but the goal is to be informed to win every race this year